Hi everybody, this is Anne. In this video, we're going to discuss a topic that surprisingly there's not a lot of specific information about because it's not widely understood. And I have to admit, it's a real challenge for me. And that is, how do you make a piece of pottery pour smoothly without drips or dribbles or gurgles? Is there really a way to create the perfect pouring vessel? I've been doing some research on this and the best article I found on the subject was written by John Hesselberth, who highlights tips from experienced potters also in search of this very thing. Coming up, I'll demonstrate three throwing techniques to create spouted vessels and with each design, we'll implement the tips from John Hesselberth's article. Finally, I'll test these out to see how they flow, to see if there's any gurgling and if any of them drip. The first design is to just throw a simple cylinder and pinch an open spout pourer. I started by pushing down on the clay from the center of the mound with the side of my right hand. I then coned the clay up and pushed it back down until it was totally centered. I opened the mound and pulled the clay towards me to widen out the wall. Then I pulled the wall up and slightly inward. I used my red rib to smooth the clay on the outside and then on the inside. I trimmed, smoothed, and rounded the rim making sure that it was almost beveled on both sides of the top. I used a trim tool to trim away excess clay at the bottom of the cylinder to round it a bit. Finally, I used a long-handled spatula to clean out the water and the sludge from the floor. For the spout, I positioned two of my left hand fingers along the outside to stabilize the soft clay. Then with my wet right index finger, I began to stretch the clay outward along the very rim to form into the spout shape. I continued in a back and forth motion, moving downward into the pot, continuing to stretch it out, bringing us to the first tip. You need to have a smooth taper of the clay from the inside all the way to the spout end for a consistent flow. Second, it's recommended to make a sharp spout lip right along the edge that should be parallel to the table. I'm working the very edge of the spout with my finger now, and when the clay stiffens, I'll sharpen it even more. Some potters say they actually use a razor blade to shave down the clay for the sharpest edge possible. The sharp edge is thought to actually stop the flow of any potential water droplets to alleviate the capillary action, thus preventing drips. Here are some pieces I made earlier, all with the cylinder and open spout design. I created some variations of it to see if different spouts would vary the results. This one has the same pinched spout as the first. For a different aesthetic, I angled the rim down. It shouldn't affect the pouring though. On this design, I actually cut out the spout area on the body and hand built a spout and attached it. For our next experiment, we're going to discuss form versus function. I'll throw a more complex shape form on the wheel with a partially closed pouring spout. I began like the first form, but severely tapered the top of the rim so it was in the shape of a bottle. I smoothed out the sides with a rubber rib. Then I used a metal rib to really get the surface flat. I trimmed the rim, then beveled the outside and inside to thin it out. I softened the edge with my fingers. I used the end of a paintbrush to smooth the inside of the spout area like we talked about in step one. To create a gradual tapering of the spout, I inserted a paintbrush end into the spout, then pushed it over gently. Then 
This created a ripple in the clay along the body. I could leave that, but I pushed the ripple back inward and tried to smooth it out, making a nice flowing vessel. Along the back side of the piece, I cut out a thin leaf shape of clay. I then stretched the clay to form a funnel opening that I could pour liquid into. After sharpening the edge of the spout, I used my needle tool for tip number three. That is, to carve a slight channel down the center of the spout so the liquid would flow back towards it and retreat into the pot. This brings us to tip number four, where the area under the lip should always be uphill to the flow of a liquid to avoid the chance of liquid escaping. Here, clearly the liquid will flow back into the pot. Here's a pot that I made previously, along with a variation of the design. These forms are unique and definitely eye-catching, but will they actually be functional? We'll find out. In this variation, I opened the area of the neck along the backside to see if that would make a difference in the flow. That brings us to creating a pour with a closed spout. My favorite design with a pouring spout is one where I start by throwing a closed form on the wheel. These can take some practice to achieve, and I have a video if you want to see more details. Check out the link above. The trick is to start narrowing the form several inches below the rim to create a gradual taper, then work your way to the top. If you continue with the gradual taper, eventually it'll close. Once the air is trapped in the piece, you can shape it how you want it. I prefer the shape to be a sort of an elongated egg shape. I trim the bottom to get this form. With a separate mound of clay, I formed a small pouring funnel, making sure the top is slightly widened out so the liquid will spiral into the pot. With that same mound of clay, I created a small spout. I trimmed the top edge of the spout and the bottom edge, then cut it off the hump. This brings us to the fifth tip, that a closed spout should protrude no more than one half the diameter of the body of the pot. The spout can be tapered or in a tube-like form. This one is tapered, but as you can see it will not exceed that rule. My research also recommended that when attaching the spout, it should be almost level or a little taller than the top of the pot to avoid spilling when filling with liquid. Normally, I wouldn't attach this until the pot was leather hard but of course for the video, I'll show you my vision of how this goes. Now here's one I made previously with a little cork style lid that fits into the collared part. Now let's test these tips out. Let's see how the cylindered open pours performed. Here's the first one. Because of the pouring design, there's good flow and no gurgling. There's no dribbling, but I do see one little drip down the body. 
I found the same to be true with the other pieces we tested that were variations of this design. They all flowed well with no gurgling or dribbling. At the same time, there was still a small drip at the end of each pour. Now here's the first tilted pour. This design is beautiful, but maybe not as functional. It dribbled and gurgled, we think, because the narrowing of the body design cut off the airflow as the liquid passed through it. It also had a little drip at the end. The second tilted pour poured much better due to the open neck design, but alas, it still had a drip at the end of the pour. Now for the closed form pour. It had a beautiful flow to it with no gurgling or dribbling, but it still had one tiny drip at the end. The fact that they all drip the very same way may be due to the thickness of the glaze that I used. I used the same glaze for all of them. There's no question that by following John's tips, it helped me create better pouring vessels, but I still had that tiny little drip at the end. So I'll keep experimenting. I'd love to hear your ideas on what works for you. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.